ever stumbled upon a vintage film that stood out for its gripping storyline and unforgettable characters. Picture this a man wrongly accused, escaping prison to clear his name and unveil the real culprit. The narrative unfolds with a mix of humor, shock, and sorrow, keeping you hooked till the credits roll. What makes this cinematic gem shine is the diverse cast of characters. From the protagonist's relentless pursuit of justice to the enigmatic supporting roles, there's something for every viewer. Throughout the journey, you'll encounter moments that are both amusing and heartbreaking. Did this classic movie, brimming with surprises, leave an impact on your life? Did it spark inspiration or offer valuable life lessons? Feel free to share your stories in the comments below. We're eager to hear your personal connections and memories related to this timeless creation. So, kick back, relax, and immerse yourself in the captivating tale. Don't miss those unexpected twists that make this film truly special. Stay tuned for more surprises. Embarking on a journey into the heart of classic film noir, this cinematic gem, though not universally embraced, weaves a tale anchored by a stellar cast. At a youthful 22, Lauren Buckhall's allure remains timeless, providing a magnetic presence in the midst of a plot that occasionally stretches believability. Some characters add depth to the narrative George Felsinger seeks a simple life, while Sam the cabbie surprises with unexpected altruism, even if their motivations diverge from typical noir archetypes. Amidst the narrative twists, standout performances elevate the movie. Madge, portrayed by Agnes Moorhead, sends chills as the villain, her looming presence felt in every scene. Dr. Coley, played by Housley Stevenson, adds intrigue with veiled motivations behind a professional facade. The dream sequence involving the Doctor is a highlight, showcasing the film's blend of suspense and psychological depth. Despite its imperfections, this compelling watch, particularly for classic noir cinema enthusiasts, employs innovative camera techniques like the camera and the hero's head device, providing a unique visual dimension. While the plot demands suspension of disbelief, watching Vincent Perry navigate San Francisco's treacherous streets is undeniably captivating. Whether revisiting annually or experiencing it for the first time, this noir classic maintains its place in the cinematic pantheon. In a classic film, the composer repurposed music from another movie he worked on earlier. The building shown in the movie is still standing in San Francisco. One particular apartment in it is quite famous among fans, recognizable by a cardboard cutout visible from the street. This place attracts many enthusiasts of vintage noir films. It was sold for a significant amount in 2016. The film is notable for being the third collaboration between a well-known couple in Hollywood. They appeared in several other movies together. Innovating with a German Reflex 35 camera, the filmmakers behind a classic noir film pioneered point-of-view shots, a technique now common in cinema. The absence of the lead actor's face in the initial half displeased Warner Brothers head Jack L. Warner, who couldn't alter the film's direction mid-production. As one character considers leaving, another's reluctance is highlighted by the melancholic melody of someone to watch over me playing in the background. The interplay of light and shadow, typical of film noir, adds depth to the tension between them. Throughout the movie, audiences are drawn into a world of mystery and intrigue where every shadow hides a secret and every glance reveals a hidden motive. It's a remarkable example of filmmaking that continues to resonate with viewers, showcasing the power of cinema to transport us to another time and place. In a scene from the movie, the hotel room's painting catches your eye. It reminds you of James Earl Fraser's famous sculpture, the end of the trail. The artwork's sad beauty reflects the ups and downs the main character faces in the story. It subtly mirrors the themes of facing challenges and pushing through tough times. In this film, there's a moment where the main character changes how he looks. He wears a full hairpiece for the first time in his career. This change in appearance shows the internal transformation happening as the story unfolds. As he gets deeper into the plot, his character gets more involved in a tricky and dangerous situation. At a crucial point in the story, he talks to the police on the phone. He's navigating a maze of lies and suspicion. To keep things mysterious, he decides to call himself Kennedy, hiding who he really is as he moves carefully through the uncertain shadows. The heart of Dark Passage isn't just in the surprising plot twists. It's also in the small details like the meaningful artwork and the subtle changes in appearance that show the main character's inner journey. It's a skillful exploration of identity and making up for mistakes, smoothly integrated into the world of film noir. The headboard on Irene's bed was a modern Hollywood style feature, lacking a traditional footboard, allowing for opulent bedspreads without obstruction. Irene's ownership of a double bed, presumably as a single woman, may have raised eyebrows with censors. 
facelifts, considered novel surgical procedures, had their origins in the early 20th century. The term plastic surgeon comes from the Greek word meaning to form or mold. Irene drives a 1946 Ford Super Deluxe station wagon, often called a woody due to its wooden body panels and doors. Its original base price was one dollars with examples in average condition selling for $100,000 or more in 2023. In this movie, the lead character's face remains hidden or obscured for a significant portion of the film. It's not until about an hour in when he finally reveals his face by removing bandages and looking into a mirror. Prior to this, scenes either show things from his perspective or obscure his face with shadows or bandages. During a pivotal moment, when he examines Irene Jansen's scrapbook, he comes across a newspaper clipping detailing her father's imprisonment for killing her mother. Interestingly, the photo in the clipping is of Delmer Daves, the film's director. Humphrey Bogart, who plays the troubled protagonist, underwent plastic surgery to change his appearance, a plot device also used in his earlier film, Dead End. Warner Brothers acquired the rights to a David Goody's novel for $25,000. Dollar the novel was serialized in the Saturday Evening Post from July to September of the previous year. In the movie, a character advises Vincent Perry to head into Mexico by taking a bus to a town named Benton, Arizona. However, there is no such town. It's likely a reference to Benson, Arizona, which matches the route described by the bus station agent. Benson is approximately 45 miles southeast of Tucson and about the same distance from the Mexican border. Hanging on the wall of the hotel room where Perry hides out is an art print of James Earl Fraser's sculpture End of the Trail. Considered for the role of Irene Jansen, Vivek Linforce brought potential to the cast. Paida, a popular coastal Peruvian destination, attracts surfers to its beaches. The film's unique first-person perspective, coupled with Humphrey Bogart's controversial support of the Committee for the First Amendment amidst the House Un-American Activities Committee hearings, led to its underwhelming box office performance. In one of the films starring Humphrey Bogart alongside Lauren Buckhall, a pivotal scene takes place in George's apartment. After undergoing facial surgery, Vince returns to find the place illuminated by a wall lamp, revealing two sets of juggling pins hanging on the back wall. Baker's car, a 1930 Ford model, a deluxe Phaeton, plays a significant role. Its original price was $625 equivalent to about $11,700 today. In excellent condition in 2023, an example could be worth upwards of $50,000. During the filming of the movie, more than 1,500 fans gathered to watch the crew shoot Humphrey Bogart scenes at the Golden Gate Bridge. John Arledge, who portrayed the lonely man at the bus depot, bore a remarkable resemblance to James Cagney. A subtle nod to the audience occurred when I guess I'll have to change my plan played on the phonograph. While Vincent recuperated at Irene's apartment, echoing a scene from a previous Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Buckhall film, The Big Sleep. In one scene, a little boy at the bus station is portrayed by Robert Blake. Later in the movie, when Vincent Perry is driving Baker around San Francisco, their discussion takes place near the south end of the Golden Gate Bridge. However, the scene is spliced to a discontinuous location under the north end of the bridge without crossing the bridge first. Additionally, a taxi turns past a Foster's cafeteria early in the film. Foster's, a Bay Area-based chain known for its sourdough English muffins, closed its doors in the 1970s, along with other iconic eateries like Zim's, Blum's, and Compton's. In a captivating performance, Vince Edwards marked his debut in the movie, playing a significant role in the story. A notable aspect involves the character at the bus depot and the cable car's end, both portrayed by Ian McDonald. Known for his role as Frank Miller in High Noon, McDonald's appearance in two different scenes subtly connects them. Adding depth to the cast, a seasoned actor had a remarkable history with Oscar Best Picture nominees. Throughout their career, they starred in six such films, including Dead End, Dark Victory, The Maltese Falcon, Casablanca, The Treasure of the Sierra Mater, and The Cane Mutiny. Among these, Casablanca emerged victorious as the sole winner. In a film from the late 1940s, a memorable theme song called Too Marvelous for Words was reintroduced by Warner Brothers. This song had made its debut 10 years earlier in a different movie. The movie showcased a photograph of the protagonist before his surgery. This image was manipulated with double exposures and airbrushing techniques, combining the lower half of one actor's face with the upper half of the lead actor's face. The result was a striking portrayal of the character's transformation. Additionally, the protagonist's purchase of a ring for his late wife in the early 1940s was a significant gesture, equivalent to a considerable sum by today's standards. 
This financial aspect adds depth to the character's backstory, highlighting the importance of the ring in the narrative. In the years following the movie's release, both John Arledge and Clifton Young, who played significant roles, passed away. Their performances added depth to the storyline and left a lasting impression on audiences. Arledge's portrayal of the lonely man brought a haunting vulnerability to the screen, while Young's depiction of Baker added complexity to the narrative. Their chemistry with the other cast members elevated the emotional resonance of the movie. The characters they brought to life continue to stay with viewers, reminding us of the timeless power of cinema to capture human experiences. Their talents and dedication to their craft are evident in their work. Though they may no longer be with us, their impact on the film industry remains significant. Their performances serve as a reminder of the influence that great acting can have on a story, leaving a lasting impression on audiences. The movie they starred in remains a classic example of film noir, thanks to their performances. Their ability to fully embody their characters speaks to their skill as actors. As we revisit this cinematic gem, we are reminded of their talent and the lasting effect they have had on the world of film. Their presence in the movie continues to resonate with audiences, keeping their memory alive for generations to come.